Hello, my name is Devin Kohler, and I'm a PhD student in Olga Vitex Lab at Northeastern University. Today, I'll be giving an overview of the MSTAT Shiny platform and a tutorial on how to use the application. MSTAT Shiny is an R Shiny graphical user interface integrated with the MSTATS family of packages. It is versatile, scalable, and reproducible, and designed for users with limited programming and statistical backgrounds. On the right hand side there, you can see where MSTAT Shiny fits into the proteomic experiments analysis workflow. MSTAT Shiny takes as input the output from multiple signaling processing tools used for identification and quantification. It performs feature level summarization and differential analysis based on the levels of summarization. MSTAT Shiny can handle multiple types of experimental designs, both those that are label free and label based. The can be acquired via DDA, DIA, SRM, PRM, or DDA TMT. And they can answer questions related to the global protein or post translational modifications. MSS Shiny includes multiple dedicated converters depending on the acquisition type of the experiment, which you can see on the right hand side there. There are two options for using the platform, each depending on the user's need. The first option is a cloud-based option located at msstatshiny.com. This is a quick and easy option for users with smaller data sets that want to quickly analyze their data. The data here has to be lower than 250 megabytes. The other option is a local installation and the package can be installed on GitHub and will be available on Bioconductor in the next release in November, 2022. With a local installation, the package or the UI is only limited to the user's local computer resources, so it can handle much larger files. I will now go through a tutorial on how to use the platform. You can see MSTAT Shiny running on a local installation here, and this is the home page of the platform. On the home page, you can get some information on what version of the packages was used as well as some notes on what is currently available. You can also see here the link to the GitHub and the GitHub will provide more detailed instructions on how to install the platform. So first to get started, we need to click the run MS Shiny pipeline button. And that'll take us to our upload data page. You can see the different types of experimental designs that are available as well as the different converters for each experimental design. Today we'll be, we will be using a DIA data set, and I'm just going to use the example data set we have in the platform with the publication here. But if you wanted to, you could also upload a Skyline data set, a Spectronaut, OpenSwath, or DIA umpire. And you can see, depending on the type of special processing tool used, you'll need different types of files um, to upload into the system. More details on those files can be found in the vignettes in the help tab. So for now, I'm going to select example data set, click upload data, and you can see a summary of the data set on the right-hand side. We have a summary of the experimental design, including the number of conditions, biological replicates, technical replicates, a summary of the data set, including the number of proteins, peptides, peptides per protein, et cetera. And we can also see the top six rows of the converted data. So when you're satisfied with how your, the summary looks, you can click the next step button to go to the data sync processing page. This is where we do feature summarization, including missing value imputation and normalization. The different options available to you at this step are located in the left side panel here. And if you have any questions on what these different options mean, you can hover over the question mark, which will give you a brief overview of what the selections actually do. For this data set today, we're gonna to be changing and using only the top number of features, and we'll select the top 20 features for this specific data. Once you're done selecting all of the different options here, we can go down and click the Run Protein Summarization button. So once the protein summarization is complete, we can look at the overview of the summarization in the central panel. First, we have our summarized results. So if we click the Update Summarize, Summarize Results button, we can see what our summaries look like. We can look at a sample level summarization, including the biological replicates, or we can look at a group level summarization, which shows the summaries of our different conditions. 
um, also with each protein, and it includes wider long formats. So here's our long format here. We also include some plots to look at quality control and an overview of the summarization. So first we'll be looking at some quality control plots. We can plot these for all proteins or for specific proteins. First, let's look at the all protein quality control plot. And here we have an, uh, shows our log two intensities on the left side, and it's a box plot of them over all the different runs. And you can see the median run level normalization here where all the medians are normalized. We can also look at specific proteins. So let's look at this first protein here. And you can see the distribution of its intensities across all runs as well. We also include different profile plots. So let's look at that same protein that we looked at for the quality control plot. We can see this protein had four different features or PSMs, and they go as follows here. If we want to look at what the summary did for this protein, we can click this show plot with summary button. And now we can still see those features highlighted in gray, but we also see our summarized results, which is the actual values that we'll be using in the modeling step. There are additional feature, uh, different additional selections for if you want to actually show the features uh, in, the, in the top there as well. Finally, we have our option to download the data. We can download the data on the feature level, or we can download it on the summarized protein level, which is what we'll be using for the modeling. Okay, so the next step is our statistical modeling and inference, inference step. The first step here will be to creating our contrast merit matrix where we define the types of comparisons we wanna do within the groups of our data. There are multiple options here, so you can fit your specific comparisons that you need. The first step is a simple full pairwise comparison. We can also do a all against one comparison where we compare all groups against a single condition. We can create a custom pairwise comparison where we define our comparisons and add them to the matrix, or we can create a custom non-pairwise comparison. For now, we'll just do a simple all pairwise comparison, and then I'll click submit, and we can see our co comparison or contrast matrix here where each condition or each comparison is highlighted and then it's spe specified contrast. Next, we'll do our group comparison. The significance level slider here will just determine what proteins are shown in the results table, but you can still download all the available proteins here, either all modeling results, which includes significant and non-significant, or just significant proteins here. The results panel will show the protein, the comparison that's being made, its log two fold change, standard error, t-value, degrees of freedom, p-value, and adjusted p-value. If we wanna do some summaries of the data, we can do visualizations. The visualizations include volcano plots, heat maps, or comparison plots. For now, I'll just show a volcano plot. So first we select the comparison to plot. Here, let's do uh, one verse five to start, and let's view it in the browser for this singular comparison. And here we can see our volcano plot that, was plot that we decided to plot. We have some down-regulated proteins, as well as a couple lower up-regulated proteins. If we want to look at a, all of our comparisons, we'll see here we get an error where we cannot generate all the volcano plots in a single screen. So what we have to do if we want to see all of them at once is just click Save Plots Results as a PDF. Once this is clicked, we'll get a PDF of all of our volcano plots, and we can look go through and just look at each comparison and its uh, results. Okay, finally, or first, I'll go through the download analysis code button. So we see up here, we have the, once we go through the entire pipeline, you have the option to download the analysis that you just performed in an R code version. This will help with both reproducibility. If you want to rerun the experiment at a later date, you can get the exact same results by running this code. Um, and it can also help with scalability if you maybe have a bigger data set that the platform takes a little bit too long to run through. The code is sometimes a little bit faster and you can run it through the code version. So let's just take a quick look at the code. Okay, so here it just opened right up into RStudio and we can see the code that was generated. So it loads our required packages. Here we have our, our CSV that you have to just replace with your specific data that you wanna use. 
And then in, it, because we use the example data, there was no converter, but usually there'll be a converter here. Um, it runs the summarization option. And you can see because we changed that top n and did top uh, n top features of 20, it automatically input that for us. It automatically created the contrast matrix that you used for us. And then it does our modeling step here. We can also create those plots that we made as well. You just need to specify a little bit more if you want a profile or QC plot, and then what protein you want to plot. Um, but all the options that we used in the platform are available here. OK, finally, I'll go through the last step, which is future experiments or a sample size calculation step. OK, so what this tab does is it uses the standard error in, our, in the experiment that we just analyzed to help plan for future experiments and to see what kind of sample size we would need for a future experiment with similar standard error. So let's say we wanted to figure out um, what kind of samples we would need to reach a power, let's say, of 0.9. And we can see maybe we want a false discovery rate a little bit lower, or let's just keep it 0.5. Let's increase our desired fold change maybe to 2.5. OK, so here now we can see what our, what the minimum number of biological replicates it would require to reach a power of 0.9 for these specific desired fold changes. So you can see it starts up pretty high at 25. And then as the fold chains grow, goes down, we need less replicates to reach that statistical power. If we were interested in maybe a lower power of 0.8, we would need less replicates. So this can just help you plan your future experiments. And we can also download the plot if we want. Finally, there's a help tab, which goes over a specific shiny help that goes through each tab. And we also have links to the vignettes for the different packages used here as well. Okay, thank you for watching this tutorial on MS-Shiny. If you have any questions on how to use the platform or if you have any issues, we have a Google group linked in the platform that you can go to to ask questions, or you can submit an issue on our GitHub. Thank you.